In Chapter 11 of Learning Web Development with Seaside, we create a form to collect information from the user. We start by launching the Seaside one-click experience and then defining a new web component to edit events. We create a render content method that initially just shows the class name. We add an initialize method that saves a passed in event. And now, on the class side, we create a constructor method that takes an event and returns a newly initialized component. Now we go to an earlier web component that lists all the events and add a method to call our new editor component. We modify one of the report columns so that instead of simply displaying information about the event, it offers an opportunity to edit the event. When we view the event list in a web browser, we see that the data in the what column now displays as a link. Clicking on that link takes us to the editor, which simply displays the class name. Now we'll add some true editing. We modify the render content method to show a form with labels and entry fields. If you don't like the table for styling, hang on a minute. Using the web browser, we can edit fields in an event and see that they are modified. If we edit but then click Cancel, the changes are not saved. Now we'll refactor our form to avoid the use of a table for layout. We create small methods for each element to be edited. Note that instead of table rows, we have a div enclosing our elements. Finally, we modify the render method to call each of our elements. When we view the form in a browser, we see that the layout is no longer based on a table. To clean up the layout, we add some CSS styling to show the event editor as a table, and note that the layout is now better. We find that the two buttons are treated as one column. We can add an empty field that causes the buttons to move over. If we want the buttons in separate columns, we can put them each in their own span. When that is done, they display more evenly. Now we modify our application to allow the creation of a new event. We add an Add Event anchor to the event list and see that it shows in the web browser. Clicking on the link gives an error since our callback message is not understood. We create the Add method so that it creates a new event, allows the user to edit it, and then, if the edit was saved, the new event is added to the event list. We can try it out and see that saving a new event does give us a new event. Observe that we're using the new component for both editing existing events and collecting information on new events. Yet the component does not know how it's being used. This is an example of good encapsulation and code reuse. Note how we're using the result of the call which answers true if the Save button was clicked, to decide whether or not to add the new event to the saved event list. We can simplify the edit method since we don't really need to alert the user as to which button was pressed. As we experiment with adding events, we discover that changing the date does not seem to work. Let's go investigate that problem. Looking closely at the When field, we see that rendering the date time shows a string but does not have a callback for any edits to the field. We'll fix that problem by adding an instance variable to our editor to hold another component, a date time selector. When our editor component is initialized, we add the subcomponent to collect the date time. Then, when we offer the field to be edited, we use the subcomponent rather than a text entry field. Remember to add a children method to let the Seaside framework know that we have added another component to the page. Finally, we modify the save callback so that the value is copied from the component to the model. Now, we'd like to demonstrate some other form elements. Rather than having who be a text entry field, we'll modify it to use a drop-down list. We will offer as the selection list something coming from the domain model, and then we'll initialize so that we use our domain model. We'll change the display to use a select element from 
the list. In the domain model, we'll define a list of options for the what, the event to take place, and then we will initialize our domain model to have one of those values. In the event editor, we'll change the what display to be a scrolling list. We'll show the where as a text area, a multi-line text area, and modify the CSS to specify the width and height. We can modify the report column to show a string for the date time and format the string a little bit more clearly. In order to demonstrate checkboxes, radio buttons, and some JavaScript interaction with CSS, we add a game type instance variable and accessors to our domain model. We then add some instance variables to the event editor to capture some characteristics of the event. And we update the CSS so that we can hide an element. Now we're going to add a method to render the isGame and GameType fields. Smalltalk alerts us to the fact that these methods do not exist yet, and we confirm the selectors. We add the new methods, one with some JavaScript for a non-click event. When we run the application from a web browser, we discover a bug in the render when method. We should be using the message with rather than value to the span element. Fixing that in a debugger lets the form display. We can now view the editor and see various form elements. The who field is a drop-down list, the what field is a scrolling list, the when field is a subcomponent with a series of fields, the where field is a multi-line text area, changing fields including the date makes appropriate changes to the event. When we refresh the application, we see that the isGame checkbox shows and hides the game type field. We modify the save method to store a value for the game type field, either home, away, or nil. When we're done, we save our new code, quit the Seaside one-click experience. For more information, go to seaside.gemstone.com slash tutorial.